I get messages, like tons and tons of messages every day from people I've never met before. Yeah. Grown ups, young kids. There's a kid that I'm mentoring that lives in all the way in New Orleans. Wow. And we just mentor. I go through like social media. He DMs me his images and his work, and I give him different challenges and stuff. But it's like, that's awesome. You realize people are watching you, yeah. right? And they believe in you. And they, they go, like, you have to keep pushing because if you don't, then they don't believe in their dreams. Mm -hmm. So it's that. That thing. is, whoa. Yeah. That pressure Whoa, is real. sorry. Yeah, no. I need to pause on that because <laughs> that was impactful. You are so right. Yeah. If if you don't push through your for your dreams, then they start to say it they again. Do. You said it oh, great. I, I hope I say it the same way, but it's like, no, if you don't push your dream, then they don't believe in their dreams. Yes. Because, you know what I mean? It's like think of the people that you admired growing uh -huh. up. If they didn't continue pushing, right, you, you wouldn't chase your dream because you wouldn't believe it's possible. <laughs> Curve the cube will now initiate. Hey guys, it's Jemmy. All right, so I'm in South Florida. As many of you know, I know a lot of my listeners are in Florida too. So we're preparing to batten down the hatches and preparing for Irma, Hurricane Irma, to be upon us tomorrow and the eye to be upon us on Sunday, which is my birthday. Oh my gosh. But, so this is going to be a little bit of a different episode. There won't be a learning curve episode. You know, like I said, I'm just, I'm preparing for a hurricane over here, people. So <laughs> there won't be a learning curve episode, but that's okay. Because on this episode, it's the third, guys, it's the third appearance, my first three-peat. And I'm so happy. It's with a very dear friend of mine, Jason Jaffle Fleurant, Haitian artist to the stars, as I call him. So we're just, just going to dive in. I'm going to skip the fluff of the intro. We're going to dive in with him. And there's so much packed into that episode. I got the feels many times while I was doing the episode. So I'm sure you guys are going to feel some kind of way while listening to it as well and get a lot out of that conversation. And then afterwards, um, one little bit of information I will say, share with you because it's such a huge milestone. I can't totally skip over it. But I got hired recently um, by Glenn Hebert, as I call him, Glenn Hebert, Glenn the Geek, Glenn and Jen from the Horse Radio Network to be a new production assistant and help them out with their gang of shows that they have on their network. So I'm really excited about it. So not only am I, you know, starting to grow the Florida Podcast Network at floridapodcastnetwork.com. If you have a Florida podcast, please submit it to the directory. It's free and always will be. But he, as my mentor, um, so he's helping me with that, but he's also hired me to do some production work for his network. So it's really exciting. The whole crew over there has really welcomed me with open arms, including the HR and auditors. So it's a huge experience. So after my interview with Jason, what you'll hear on the other side is the very last clip, because uh, I've been using Anchor app just as I did at Podcast Movement. I use Anchor app to update everyone as I went to Ocala for that training session and just came back from that last night actually to get ready for this hurricane so you'll hear my very last update of my time in Ocala and then I shared the crazy thing that happened on the way home it's kind of too unbelievable to really process yet but so enjoy this episode it's the 123rd episode of Curve the Cube with Jason Jaffre Fleurant and uh, at the end like I said stick around you'll hear some interesting stuff that happened while I was in Ocala and on my way back all right love you guys thanks and see you at the other side of Irma stay safe if you are in Florida please please stay safe take her seriously okay bye so welcome to guys seriously this is a moment this is the first he, he scoffs, but it's true. <laughs> he is the first three-peat guest. It's official. Oh, snap. On the Curve the Cube podcast, Mr. Jason Jaffle Florent, <gasps> Haitian artist to the stars. <laughs> Please, you had some star moments in the last I, like, year. I've had some star moments. You really okay. have. So we're definitely going to be talking about that for sure. But um, I'm going to catch my listeners up on something, just in case they, they are unawares. That, so the last episode... It was uh, my annual birthday episode where I catch people up on my last year of Turn life. <laughs> and but you've done a lot in this last year of your life, too. And it's <laughs> great because we share the same <laughs> birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday high fives. Whoop, whoop. That's how we do, you know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> 
highlights, some of those star oh. moments, whether it actually involved a star or just was <laughs> your own like <laughs> shining stuff. moment from this last year? What have uh, been some of the milestones for man. you? Um, where there's meeting Jill Scott, yes. Michael Eric Dyson, Santa Claus. Slow down, slow oh, down. Oh, I'm going to try. Feed the people I'm sorry. some sorry. details, man. Right. Jill Scott. Just little things. Jill yeah, Jilly yeah. from Philly. Um, Did you just say yeah. Jilly from Philly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you, know, supposed to, you know, it's just like, don't, who would think that you meet? Yeah, I got to meet Jilly. Um, uh, it's like that, huh? Yeah. Jilly, okay. Uh, you know. Now but I no, know. For like, I always tell people, <laughs> for at least 20 to 30 minutes, she was my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. there you go. It was a solid 20 to 30 minutes straight up that she was my girlfriend. Like, Did she know that too or just you? I'm pretty sure she initiated that when she, oh. like, she was touching my oh. ears, rubbing him. And listen, it was, a, it was an interesting moment. I was, <laughs> <laughs> and how did this interesting moment happen? Well, a friend of ours, me and uh, Jamal's a friend of ours. Yeah, Jamal Clark. Yeah, she he was. was on a previous episode. I yeah. can't remember the number right now. What up, Visualists? Uh, <laughs> we were um, working backstage at an event for a friend of mine, a friend named A Guy. She was doing this poetry event down Broward, and it was something where uh, Jill Scott was performing. It yeah. was Sounds and Words. It was on Eleven Eleven. I got to think about Eleven Eleven because I always try to make wishes when that happened. <sighs> and um, originally, she wanted to try to get me to perform on it. Cause like we can't, we're not gonna be able to get you to. Do you want to just hold the curtain backstage? I'm like, hell yeah. Like spoken word perform. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So like, do you want to just pull the curtain backstage for us? I'm like, hell yeah, I'll shoot my shot. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? so that morning, I decided, well, since there's a chance I might meet Jill, yeah. I'm gonna do a painting of her, and hopefully, you know, we'll give it to her. So I did the painting. Oh and, right? man, so, that's how you do it. Hey, you know, <laughs> you gotta shoot your shot. Absolutely. Um, when uh when I initially met her, when she came out the back, like I was so starstruck. I started fumbling words, <laughs> and literally, I had that moment when she was looking me dead in my face, and I was like, B -b 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 that, that, <laughs> "That legitimately happened." And I was like, "Oh shit, I just fucked it up." Oh, <laughs> just like, no. like, yeah, I was like, just, so we just like, oh, no. I'm looking at Ma like, "Yo, I effed it up." I was just like, "I'm just gonna pull the curtains, my uh, own business." For whatever reason, she decided to just stay with all of us on our side of the stage throughout the whole night, and she was just back there. I'm like, mm -hmm. "I'm gonna find my shot mm -hmm. at some point or whatever." So at one point, she goes to the stage to introduce the next person. And I just so happened to be standing by the curtain, and I had the painting in my hand. I had no intentions of giving it to her at that moment. It's just everything just lined up. Yeah. And at the point, she had just did something about erotic poetry. And so she so you're already, up. like, thinking a certain kind of way? Yeah, I'm thinking a certain <laughs> way, right? And then, like, so I'm standing there, and she walks off stage, and she's standing next to me. And I'm just like, Jill Scott is standing next to me. Don't really? do nothing dumb. Right? <laughs> Don't do, just stand there. And uh, I kind of notice her eyes kind of looking down because mm -hmm. she sees the page. So she's kind of looking at it, but she's not trying to look at it. Right, right, right. And I'm like, all right, shoot your shot. So I go, Miss Scott, before I could even finish it, she's like, oh, my God, what is that? And I've been looking at that this whole <gasps> night. And I'm like, oh, well, this is the painting I made for you. For me, what? Da, da, da. And the next time, so we're just talking. And she's, like, rubbing the back of my oh, um, wow. arm. Is like, and I'm just like, you're touching me right now. <laughs> and she's just. She giggles and she low, goes Did lower. You say that up? Oh, yes, wow. yes. I couldn't control it. I couldn't control it. Like, like <laughs> I couldn't control it. And she starts giggling and stuff, and she just keeps rubbing me. I'm like, oh my god, Jill Scott is touching me. And I'm just like <laughs> melting in her arms and stuff. And um, turns out Jamal took all these pictures, oh like of god. us like talking in the curtains and whatnot. Jamal's so just, awesome. He's the man. He's the mm -hmm. man. And like, yes. Yeah, so for like at least 30, 20 minutes, she was my girlfriend. She was like, she made me in charge to go like. When she needed to go in the back, like, you come get me. I was like, stop it. Like, Jill Scott told me to go get her. Dude. Yeah, so. <laughs> that is fan. Have you come down from that high at no, all? No, no, no. <laughs> Do you ever want to? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just know. <laughs> I told the, the, the woman that I'm like currently seeing, like, I'll, Jill Scott, I'll leave you for Jill Scott. That's <laughs> I just that's you have to have that understanding. Yeah, you know yeah, because I mean? yeah, like, she's you know? such a high bar. I yeah, mean, she understands. Understand. She understands. She's you like, are I in get Jill it. Scott's wake right I'm now. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> Jill called me. It's it's over. I'm sorry, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so that was obviously a huge high. But yeah. where else? Something else you're gonna list? Uh, let's see. Are we talking more still? Uh, whatever you want to say. Yeah, Dyson. whatever. Michael Eric Dyson. That wow. was that was. Um, we had found out like he was going to be here for Martin Luther King Day mm -hmm. doing a speech at the Palm Beach um, College. So we found out about that event. And then again, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to paint this painting in the morning of, of him. Yeah. He, Michael Eric Dyson is one of my like real idols, heroes. I grew up reading all his books, mm -hmm. watching like literally like that's, you know what I mean? So um, I was like, all right, so. Make the painting. I decided to. <laughs> That's your end, man. <laughs> I realized something. You got talent, like, might as well use exactly. It. <laughs> no one's going to stop you if you got a painting of somebody that's like, you know, I mean, if you got like a, just a regular picture or a poster board, right. they'll be like, oh, no. Right. What is a full on painting? People go, 
you know what? Yeah, because it makes them look good too. Right. It's like, oh yeah, you came from our city, and like, yeah, we're part of this whole thing. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? so yeah, go ahead and take your credit. It's cool. <laughs> but um, so I make this painting, and I roll it up, and I make sure I took a picture of it before I roll it up because it's easier to transport and move around. Right. So that and everybody, you don't want to draw too much attention. <laughs> so we get to the auditorium. You don't need him rubbing on you. Yeah, right. <laughs> We get into the auditorium and it's packed, and the Argo goes that we need to stand so that way I can maneuver to get to the. Cause we don't know how we're gonna get it to him. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they were making everybody sit down. And I had a clever idea because since Exhibit Trail kind of is like a media outlet, yeah. I was like, I told Maul and uh, Lou, if they ask you anything, tell them you're Exhibit Trail, and that's exactly what we did. The guy Aww. came up, oh, you got something like Exhibit Trail, and Maul's got his camera, Lou's got his little recorder on it. Like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like. <laughs> Look at this working for like, me. You feel like you get past that velvet. Yeah, bro. exactly you know, that feeling. Like it was like, feeling. okay, we can do whatever we want, <laughs> right? So, awesome. I, well, while he was on, so he's on stage, and they're doing like the other speakers before he goes on. And I noticed that he's on his phone, and I'm at follow him, so I realized, oh, he's tweeting right now. Yeah. So like, it might be my chance to like at least get his attention to let him know that I'm in the building. Are you tweeted at him? Yeah. I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right there. there. You go. I literally sent him a tweet with a bit of the picture, and I was like, yo, Michael, I got this for you, you know, like, whatever. Oh my God. And he responded. He was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see it. And I see him on the stage responding to it, and I'm like, yo, this is surreal. It was like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right. So I'm like, we could be a little more cool and chill now because of the fact we know that he knows it's in the building. So he's going to make us way to find out, right? Right, right. So the event goes on, amazing speech and whatnot. And then um, finally, it's like, um, gets to the point where, like, he's got to get ready to switch over to do, like, uh, to sign books and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So everybody's rushing the, cur- the stage and whatnot. And I just like, I walk towards the stage and I kind of unroll it a little bit. He sees me and he goes, get up here, get up here. What? I was like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> so we walked up and he treated me like, like a friend. Like, like he was like, bro, you been on a hug and embracing. He's making people take us pictures in his phone. And it was just like, yo, what? oh my God, Michael Eric Dyson just embraced me as an actual friend friend. Oh. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. So you have Jill Scott as a girlfriend, uh, Michael Eric Jackson as a friend friend. You know, you know just, <laughs> I mean, just building the rapport or whatnot. <laughs> like, I feel lucky to know you all of a sudden, uh, like super lucky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's cool, I like, can't believe you agreed to this little interview. Oh, what? This is like, what do you mean? Oh, you know. <laughs> like, no, That's it, wonderful. Yeah, and he's, his friendship actually has continued. Like, every now and then he'll DM me and we'll talk and whatnot. Stop it. Yeah, one of my um, my solo show, the one at the 1310 Gallery, he actually commented in the event, which would be good luck. Stop. Yeah, and I was just like, wait right a minute. Right now. Yeah. Stop it. Oh, it gets crazy. <laughs> Senator um, Cory Booker. Yes, <laughs> I remember seeing that picture. Yeah, he was in town for a stump for um, Hillary at the time, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And my mentor, Paul Fisher, knew that he was coming. And he was like, yo, do you got anything you want to get Corey? I was like, huh? yeah. If I mean? don't, I will make it. You know what I mean? <laughs> say, you, you ain't saying that won't work. So we, um, he picks us up and meets me and Maul at the um, it's, This Is It Cafe. Where uh-huh. Oh, yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's where he was going to come. And I actually had the first copy of my Art of Trill book, too. And it was just a proof copy. So that, that was like I, your first book, right? Yeah. yeah. So I had that, and I had um, this big painting. And so it was like, all right, cool. This is what happens. So he comes in. We don't want to interrupt him too much because he's doing the rounds and whatnot. And then finally, I come up and get to talk to him, and his eyes are just stuck on the painting. <gasps> and like, yeah, he's just, it was crazy. I gave him a book. He goes nuts. He, he referred to me as a treasure. And I was going, no. yo. I was like, hey, Corey Book called me a treasure. So, you what? know, and like, yeah, he was, it was, it was nuts. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. Okay, yeah. so I know you guys can't see the look on <laughs> Chapla's face right now, but his <laughs> smile is taking up the entire room. Oh, well, it's, a, <laughs> it's a big room. <laughs> but yeah, and he's, co- he even on, there was an exhibit that had opening in New Jersey, and he responded about that. He tweeted me, wishing me good luck about that one too. And it was just like, Oh, cool. I got political connects now, too. You know, you, go, <laughs> you know, like moving up in the world. But um, with all that, Whoa. like, it's been a lot of things that's happened. But all that, the I think the most amazing moment is having the book, the Teddy Alfonte book, because it was something that I started yeah. two years ago. Yeah. Like, when I didn't know anything about self publishing, I didn't even know what I was doing when I did it. I was just originally just starting these drawings of this yeah. elephant. And I was like, oh, it's me as an elephant and paints. And, <laughs> You know? I love, <laughs> I love that, like, it's, can I call it a character? I yeah, guess? I yeah, love it. That, that's what it is. Love yeah. it. As soon Thank as you. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, I know what that's about. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, let's tell our story through the end. Yeah, and to like the moment when it, and it's funny that I have been talking for the interview because it, 
it wasn't supposed to come to the eighth. It came like a whole week in advance, mm -hmm. and it's just like they have it in my hands, and my nephew reading it, and like my mother and my all my friends. And it's like you turn it, you see like the real barcode thing. And it's like oh, oh it's a real, real it's book. It's a real book. <laughs> you know, I'm like this is a real you thing. You just print this in your bedroom, like, right? This is a it's real a, this book. a real book. Like you know, <laughs> like it's a, you know it, that 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 was because like I always remember being a kid and um the school fairs. The book fairs and how yeah. like I always wanted to get I was we were broke so we didn't have any money so I would always have to walk around like all my friends and everybody's getting books and I just yeah, wanted yeah, books yeah, yeah. and like I remember the end of the school year when the library was giving out books and me being this little kid carrying all these big bags of books home and wow. my father building a bookshelf for me to have and I read every one of those books Aww. and now to be able to be like I made one and I made you know, one and now your book. <laughs> Yeah. Can be carried home by another kid you know, and another put kid on could, their shelf. Yeah, it's like oh, oh, I'm tearing up a little bit. I, well, you know, I tear. I'm not gonna front. I teared up when I first got it. Yeah. Like I came home late at night and I opened it up and like, wow, it's this is real. It's you know, hey. It's Absolutely, like, and I know you got to speak to the kids at McRae, um yeah. Elementary. Or McRae, yeah, yeah, I yeah. It? I forgot about that. Yeah, that McRae, happened during yeah. over the um the summer. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, uh, what was that like? Um. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, it was. It was fun. Did they? What, did they? Because kids can be super honest. They can be. They yeah. can sometimes ask questions that like needle right to the point. Like, did at, they? Were they? Any, any I think questions? at that point is when you start to realize that you like kids. Like, because you know, again, with kids, like if they don't see you as a somebody, then they don't. You know, they don't see you as a somebody. Mm -hmm. The moment I walked in the room, they instantly treated me like I was a somebody. Wow. Like they thought I was some kind of famous rapper or something. Wow. So they knew, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like that was. It was like. Maybe that, like, you know, like, that's the treatment that you got. And it's like, whoa, they really, they really were rocking with me. And they, yeah. every word that I said, they paid attention to. We were like, I donated a painting to their school. And I had them, like, come up with a name for the painting. And yeah. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. Sometimes it's those moments that you realize you really are an influencer. Yeah. And it can be just this small group of of people, but there are these open minds. And yeah. You just dove right in there. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. And another little person <laughs> that you were super uh, special to and he talks about yeah, he's a lot. Super special to me. <laughs> uh, was my little boy Jordan yeah. and I mean he still talks about taking your picture. Really? At that ex Oh, oh. yeah, totally. <laughs> You know, so let's talk about your exhibit. So okay. what was, what, how did that all come about, and mm. what was that whole experience like? That one, that, the plot twist that happened with that. I know, <laughs> I know, we'll but, get there, yeah. Yeah, right, um, yeah, that was, uh, at the time, the, certain, the particular curator at the space, I'm not going to say their name, mm -hmm. but um, they, like, they was like, yo, you've been grinding for so long, we have an opportunity, we really want to allow you to do a solo exhibit there. I was like, ah, right, cool, because that's a gallery where, it was the first actual gallery I ever exhibited in, back in 2011, mm -hmm. and I remember being on the first floor and just having a few pieces. Yeah. And originally the exhibit was supposed to be on the first floor again, and like the next year, um, some years later, like last year, I did an exhibit trail there where we ended up doing all three floors. I didn't wow. even have my art in it, I just put it on for everybody else. Oh, look at you. Because yeah, at the time, exhibit trail, that was what I was doing. Are. I was like, eh, more or less. A lot of people don't even realize <laughs> that too. It's like, a lot of this last year, a majority of the shows, if I had a piece in it, it was only because we just had a space that was open. I had to get it. Other than that, I was really doing it for other people. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah. honestly, that's the key. I yeah. think a lot of people miss that. When yeah. they're trying to make themselves into something, sometimes you can be so focused on that, you forget that it's not about you all the time. Exactly. And it shouldn't be. You know, the reason people excel, I believe, usually in this world is because they are giving into other people. You yeah. know? So, and you are a prime example of doing oh, that. Thank so you. congratulations I, yeah. for being you. I try. I also awesome. be catching these bodies low-key, low but you know. <laughs> 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 Gotta make up for the car. <laughs> but no, so, um, yeah, so she was like, and then like when we did it, we donated a lot of money to her organization. So she was like, we really want to give this back to you. Mm. And I was like, all right, cool. And I had a whole new body of work at the time, and I was like, all right, I can also get some work from um, friends that they hold, and we can do a retrospective of new stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just kept moving from the bottom to the second floor to the final. It was like, you got the whole entire third floor. Wow. And I was like, whoa, the Does that mean, floor? is that like the higher you go, like the more important? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Like, <laughs> it's like you're, you are the top level. <laughs> you have to you know. work for it. I remember I had to work for it. I had to <laughs> climb all those stairs carrying my child. I, yeah, and I, I watched you. I was like, I'm like, you know, there's an elevator right there. I was like, like oh, now you tell me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, look how strong she is. <laughs> Carrying her child all the way up. This, I'm, like, so, I'm so proud of her. I, mean, I couldn't tell like her to. Yeah, right. coming up to the top. <laughs> My bad. But hey, did you die though? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. But yeah, so then 
that happened, and it was great. It, and then also, it was a great way for me to honor my father. So, mm. and talk, yeah. talk, talk about that a little bit. How, oh. in, what, in what way? What do you mean? Because, uh, like, he had passed, um, uh, like, you know, like, the last, last year when we did the All the Way Up, we did the closing on the anniversary of his birthday. Mm-hmm. And at the round time, when that happened, when we did the um, the the exhibit, it was Father's Day weekend. Mm. So it was also, again, like, when we put, when we hung the exhibit, it was Haitian Mother's Day. Oh. So, like, right? So it got the, okay, I ordered my mom, but put yeah, the yeah, exhibit. Yeah. And then the opening at the other exhibit was on the weekend of Haitian Father's Day. Wow. So it was like both my parents got that same yeah. energy. So, And I'm a, I'm a big stickler about that. I believe the universe makes those things happen 100%. for a reason, right? So, 100%. Yeah, so that meant a lot to me. So. Oh, I saw <laughs> the picture you posted just a couple of days ago, I think, mm-hmm. of you visiting his, his yeah. site. Yeah, I got to go, yeah, because it, it had been like, a, I try to go very frequently, Yeah. and it had since um, the uh, August, like the anniversary of his death, I hadn't been there, mm-hmm. and it was getting too close to my birthday, and September just happened, and yeah. I was like, I can't not go see him before. Because this time of the year always bothers me because it's like I lost yeah. them before the next chapter of my life happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's important to me. Like, I always try to go there and see him and speak to him before the next chapter to feel like of we course. still have that. What so. pieces of him do you see in there? Uh, his entrepreneur yeah. <laughs> nature. Yeah, his, like, that whole, like, I realized that as I get older, it would, like, it's like that whole aspect. I remember he started his own cleaning company and all that stuff before he got sick and he used to have me and my brother go with him. We used to have to do the shampooing on the gra- ground <laughs> and stuff. And like he was just—he was one of those people who just believed in working hard, right. and like, and you know, chasing whatever your dream, your goal is, and right. like making that thing put foot the ground. Right. And I realized over the years that's always been me. I've always been the whether I got to walk to where I got to go, hop on a train, carry yeah. on. Yeah, you put I'll your head do down, and you yeah. go through it. And that's that's from him. I got it's that from. It's really been <laughs> exceptional to watch. But yeah, that's a Haitian mentality. But that's one of those things that. I can definitely say that it's reflected with him. And so a lot of the opportunities that come, I realize that's him. Mm. That's him working and pulling strings for me. So, mm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. Even I think I'm, having your opener on Father's, Haitian Father's Day was, yeah. was a little bit of a sign. Yeah, that was, yeah right? Just, just a tad bit. <laughs> but like, it's always been that way. Like the, um, I always tell people the day he, he died, um, like I live literally moments after he died, I'm outside in the yard and I get a phone call from a, a friend of mine named Adam, and mm-hmm. he's like, hey, I was talking to my um, my boss at Atlantic Current, and we, we want to run a feature on you, and it was my first ever full spread magazine feature, and I realized instantly that was him, like, and ever since then, it's just, you know, he's, even the book, like, I really, I published the book, and I didn't realize I published it on the day of the anniversary of me, um, us burying him, Yeah, and I was like, that, you know. These, these things He's don't just happen. He's not missing anything. Right? You said a minute ago that you felt like he died right before the experiencing the next chapter. He's yeah. not missing anything. He went to anything. go make the next chapter uh, happen. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, so. Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right, so let's continue to talk about this next chapter because I know you're <laughs> super excited about your book. But I also <laughs> saw something else. Mm-hmm. Um recently that you're starting to like put out some merchandise. merchandising yeah what is that about it's, it's also, how did that happen it also sparred from that my incident with the gallery because uh-huh. like, i like I, I don't really have much love for galleries in general mm-hmm. it's so because well, like, i remember that was part of your motivation for starting exhibit trail yeah was to have this other space and this alternative. yeah because yeah. it's like the it's all a game like mm-hmm. they all run these games on you and like they take your work they don't really promote your work they take percentages from your work mm-hmm. um then they'll go and like license your work, they'll go make prints and stuff and all this stuff and put it on things and won't show you how to do it. Right. Like an art book, you're not supposed to be able to do that. They go do that. Mm. And it's like, why am I allowing the middleman to do all this stuff when they don't care? When I could, We live in a day and age where we could do it ourselves. Totally. So I just went to hunting the internet. I was like, no. I remember I used to work at a flower shop for like nine years. <laughs> yeah, It's artificial that. plants. Like, working from there, I realized, I learned how like, how she would order things for the warehouse and you know, then the markups and all that stuff. And I realized, well, we live in a day and age. I can go directly to the warehouses myself, mm-hmm. and like so, I just went and started hunting down different sites and just creating my own merchandise. And like, all right, I'll just this. I am the product. I am the brand. Absolutely. Right. So it's like, let me do that. Yeah. Because you can't get it nowhere else. And so it just cut out the middleman. It's like I was doing ourselves and yeah. just lead the way of showing that entrepreneurship. And like, yeah. So 
<clears throat> my third anniversary of this show is coming up October 15th. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And I had intended to start like a four-part series leading up to that date. Yeah. Um, because there's a book by the name of, by a guy named James Oliver Jr. It's called The More You Hustle, The Luckier You Get. And I interviewed, I co-hosted an interview with him um, on a, a friend's show called Hustle All Day, Got to Get Lucky. <laughs> I like and, that, man. Um, I just loved his his book, his his message, you know, because it's true. You know, mm-hmm. things don't just happen. You know, they you have to work for it. Yeah. So the last episode was supposed to be the first one in the series where I talk about stuff relating to his book, and I, it was my birthday episode podcast, but we went through it was just too much going on. So, <laughs> but I really want to talk about this next piece with you. Okay. Because, <laughs> so one of the running themes in his. Um, in his book is just the question of why does everything have to be so effing hard? Everything's a contest, right? man. <laughs> and when I was, re- I was listening back to my last birthday episode from last year, who, which was co-hosted by my friend Scotty Fusion yeah. and your oh, friend Jessica Prestige, Prestige, yeah. Prestige yeah. who's part of Exhibit Trio. Yeah. So one of the things that she said in it, which still cracks me up every time I hear it, she said, sometimes... I hate my dream, and I get it because it's so, it really is so hard. Yeah. So I'm going to read a quick snippet from James uh, is James's book, and then I, I really want to hear your thoughts on it because okay. you've definitely been ups and downs, Man. you know? <laughs> yeah. So here it goes. It's from Chapter 4, and it says, A good friend once told me that most people who have setbacks never push through them and persevere. They let obstacles define them. At that moment, I chose not to be defined by failure and decided to persevere. So what makes you decide to persevere? Man, it's it's this realization that it's it's bigger than me. You started, at one point, when I first started doing art, right, it was just this thing to therapy. It was therapy for me. I didn't think it would go any further. Mm -hmm. Then as you venture further on and on, you start realizing more and more people are watching and like more more people are inspired by you, mm-hmm. and it's just like I get messages like tons and tons of messages every day from people I've never met before. Yeah, like grown ups, young kids. There's a kid that I'm mentoring that lives in all the way in New Orleans, wow. and we just mentor. I go through like social media. He DMs me his images and his work, and I give him different challenges and stuff. But it's like that's awesome. You realize people are watching you, yeah. right? And they believe in you, and they they go like. You have to keep pushing because if you don't, then they don't believe in their dreams. Mm-hmm. So it's that, that thing. is whoa. Yeah, that pressure whoa, is real. Sorry, yeah, no. I need to pause on that because <laughs> that was impactful. You are so right. Yeah. If if you don't push through your for your dreams, then they start to say it they again. Do. You said it oh, great. I, I hope I say it the same way. But it's like no, if you don't push your dream, then they don't believe in their dreams. Yes. Because, you know what I mean? It's like think of the people that you admired growing uh-huh. up. If they didn't continue pushing, right? You, you wouldn't chase your dream because you wouldn't believe it's possible. Right. And like for me, like I always tell people, I'm just a regular mm-hmm. from Chillingworth, mm-hmm. and uh, who just so happened to pick up a pen brush, paintbrush and just got this far, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And to them, it's like, well, if he can do it, then I can do it. But if I stop now, and if it's those little things that stop me, even though it feels like the biggest thing in the world to me right now, right, if right. I stop because of that, then they stop. And whose dream did I kill? You know, oh. who who did I stop from being able to be? What they needed to be. Maybe that kid might have been the doctor that cured it, cancer. Right? And you know, it makes me think of your of one of your sayings because at that point you would have to take a little bit of responsibility for killing his dream. Yeah. That saying is keep what you kill. Keep what you kill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that has to stay on my conscience is because because like I know these people. Like that kid yeah. from New Orleans, right? If I stop now, right, then he stops. And then it's like I killed his dream. Yeah. That has to stay on my conscience. Yeah. Like so it's like yeah. Dude, you gotta stop. I'm getting these chills. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving myself these chills as we speak to Because, <laughs> like, there are always, I've had so many moments where I just, I want to stop. It's, it's hard. It's it's a hard dream. It's yeah. really, and it's, you realize, it's, it's like, while there are all those people that you're, you know, who are watching and believing you, it's really you by yourself on that journey. Yeah. And you're trying to make the world understand what you're doing. And you're going against the grain, especially with art, because, you, this world teach you that you're supposed to get a corporate job and you know all this and this doesn't work for people who look like us. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like 
now you want to make books. Now you want to, you know, what I'm saying? now you want to merchandise your own stuff, right? Like, no, you need to go through the. You want to make a backpack? Right? What are you like, doing? Exactly, right? Umbrella? That's what the hell is wrong with you, right? <laughs> you know, like, what is wrong with you? I was like, no, it's not. This is not what you do. Go work for the company that does that, right? right. And that here I am, and I'm doing that, and I'm just, and I get these, you know, you get these people who are just like, yo, thank you. I like, I believe in you, and, and it's just like. But the thing is, your your uh. Your style of art is mm-hmm. so distinctive. Oh, thank I mean, you. when you see a Jacques Le Pen, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a Jacques <laughs> Le painting. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't, it so works with merchandise. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's such a brand. You, you it know really what it is? is such a brand. It's the, the realization of, uh, well, more so me accepting it. Because when I was, uh, it reminds me of Harry or Matisse. Matisse had this mm-hmm. thing about the way he painted. He was like, um. It used to get on his nerves because when you walked into a gallery, it stuck out like a sore thumb. Mm. But then at some point, he embraced it because, like, yeah, I am different. And, right. And, but what I realized was I used to run away from the fact that I was a cartoonist. Yeah. Like, the way I was able to really tell our stories and be so creative on it because, like, I reimagined the whole world into my own viewpoint. Yeah. And, like, early on, it used to annoy me because I was like, no, I want to be like regular artists. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? like, you tried to shut it down. Yeah, but it's like, you can't. You have to be you. You have to, this is what the gift God gave you and I started embracing it and it just, yeah, it now has its own look to the extent that it went toward merchandising because I was creating the things that you would see on merchandise and right. stuff. It's like, the only difference is instead it's an elephant, but normally you would have seen Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, right? And so, or, you know, some of the stories I tell, the way the characters are created, it's just, it's painted and created in a way where it's, it works for us mentally. You see it. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be on these things. And well, so. that, done. I am going to get a <laughs> chocolate umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I can rock that everywhere I go I, and have people, because yeah. it's just good to conversation starter. It you is. Know? Yeah. It's like, what oh, where, where did you get that? To, uh, yeah. Right? Like, or book bags. Like, oh, that's a cool book bag. Where did you get that book bag? And, you know, it's like. But yeah. so, what? What have been some of those painful moments, though, for you for the last year? I know one, I don't know if you, you want to talk about it or not, but oh, when we can talk the ex- about it. exhibit ended yeah. and certain things grew legs and walked away. Yeah, you know, I, apparently magic is a real thing. Gallery accepts no responsibility for it. Oh, that and when I realized me. that the birth of Trail was one of them, because yeah, that's one that's, of your iconic paintings. Yeah, that's the one, and that's actually what really sparred the whole merchandising thing. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I'm gonna make whoever took it feel it. They're gonna, oh. they, you're gonna not not see that painting because it's like again, like you said, it's one of the most most iconic paintings. And the three that magically disappeared, I don't own them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't own any of those three. Those three were lent to me for the exhibit. <gasps> so, By people who had bought them. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, so you got the, the just got to work work. <laughs> yeah, oh, it makes no. it you know that much harder because it's like, oh, you, and again, they're not taking any form of responsibility for it. And I had to ban the entire Broward County. I don't, I won't do anything there yeah. at all because it's like, for me, I've given my whole life with art. I've given yeah. away art. Yeah. Like, I've, like I've gone, I've done so much for people with it. So for it to be taken from me, right? And then for people not to from care. Someone who's such a giver. Yeah. That's crazy. And for it to be not like for them to not keep it's like all right, no well, cool. one, no one stepped up and said, yeah. "I've seen it here." Yeah, and we're talking about not just a gallery; it's an artist residency. There's yeah. no, you're not getting into that space, like that area, if you're not part of that. Right. So somebody has to know something. Right. But since no one cares and no one's all right, cool. Well, then I can't. Clearly, I'm not wanted here, right. so I can't come here. And I've had to turn down several. Th- I've had to pay people back for things that I can't. I had to turn down. Like, yo, I'm sorry. Here's the funding. I can't, so I can't do it. Wow. I just stand on the principle. I was just going to say, you were standing on principles. Yeah, so, you know, that's something. It's good. principalities. It's principalities, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Got it, you know, keep it. Tr- it hurts me, too, because there'd be a lot of my friends who had these events, and it's like, yo, we're going, and I'm like, I can't. I'm sorry. I just, I can't, yeah. like, because it hurts, especially that particular one, the one of Jessica, the Breath of Trill, yeah. because she lent it to me, and I, it, I had it since, the Bombay Sapphire exhibit last year, and that was when I first started getting back to actually focusing on myself artistically. Mm-hmm. And it was this almost unwritten thing where everywhere I go, she goes. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it was like, it was mm-hmm. kind of on tour with it. Like, there's, um, 
that interview that I did with the new Haitian um, generation. Yeah, yeah. Right? That actually comes out next month. I was going to say, I still haven't seen it. I know, Christmas right? Thing. They finally. Jeez, <laughs> it's like a year later. Yeah, they finally <laughs> messaged me like, oh, hey, we're releasing it to, um, funny enough, the 13th of next month, which is Friday. Okay, okay. Jason, okay, Friday, Friday 13th. Right, I was perfect. like, oh, well, that's funny. Very good. But See? in the bit, right, <laughs> behind me, though, throughout that whole interview is that painting, right? And it's wow. like, so it's like, you took, like, you didn't just take it a painting. It was really, like, the heart of your collection, yeah, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you took that from, but it forced me to, like, again, change stylistically mm-hmm. and just refocus the whole concept of what I was doing. And it's like, I'm going to, like, I, um, okay, you know, I talk how I talk, so, you know, sorry for your listeners who don't, but there's a phrase that's, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there's a phrase, a quote that Jay-Z has that I've always loved. Ooh, I hit the mic. I'm sorry about that. Okay. There's a quote that Jay-Z has that um, I've always loved growing up, and I didn't fully understand it as a kid, and I got older, I understood it, and it goes, like, killing oh. dead is nothing. You kill him breathing, then he's saying something, right? So it's like, oh, I'm you a, felt that. Yeah, I was like, you know what, I'm going to this feeling, this pain, I got, I'm going to make, you can't, you, there's no way you can have that painting and anyone come in your house and see it. Yeah. It's not going to work that way. Mm-mm. You're going to, you're going to, everybody's going to know that that thing is, exists. It's going to be on books. It's going to be on earrings. It's going to be everywhere. Right. And it's to the extent that someone goes, hey, where did you get that? And you know? on every tag in the back of every, everything, yeah. in the bylines <laughs> of the image, you just say, Stolen on, <laughs> well, so everybody I just, knows. I try not to say stolen. <laughs> I, I I always say that it magically disappears. Magically like, disappears. Everyone else uh, uses that phrase. I'm not telling them not to use it. Right. I just you know I try to be a little more diplomatic about it. I just like it magically disappears. Well, I don't have to. It was stolen. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, I had to be talked down from burning down the gallery because, like, uh, like, oh man, because again, yeah, because like again, the thing is, I really mean it when I say I'm just a regular dude from Chillingworth. So yeah. it's like, it's like, I always told, it's like, art to me is kind of like drugs. It's legalized drug dealing. There's no regulation on how to sell it. Nobody needs art. Mm-hmm. It, you just you become desired to it and you become addicted to it. Mm-hmm. So it's like you stole. You stole bricks of cocaine from a drug dealer. You mm. you had to suffer for that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? So instantly my mindset was like, oh, I'm burning this gallery. And I was like, no, I just, that whole that whole county has to suffer for it. My presence has to now be missing. And now with galleries, if you want me in the building, you have to pay me. Right. You have to either, you think you can sell my art. Because like another thing is like, they'll tell you, all right, let's say I'm selling a piece for $300, right? Uh-huh. So they'll mark it up a couple of thousand. Like let's say, let's just say they mark it up 1200 Right, so they can get 40, 60 percent off of it. Okay. Not really gonna promote it or none of that stuff. And if it don't sell, hey, you get it back. You gotta come back and go get it, right? Why am I wasting my time giving it to you and you marked it all the way up, right? right? When I could just go hustle it myself. So then it's like, all right, if you think you can sell it for that much, give me 20 percent in advance. If you can't do that, then what are we talking about? Boom. Right. Because <laughs> 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 it's like. Again, to use a drug, de- I've never met a drug dealer that's gonna front cocaine. No, I'm not giving you a brick, happen. right? <laughs> like, like no, like we're we're basing everything on my. There's a there was a gallery who I didn't submit to be in their show, and they put my name on the flyer. They spelled my name wrong, but they put my name <laughs> on the flyer, right? And so it's they're like, totally just using your yeah, and it's like so you realize oh it's different now, like you know like yeah you are in the papers a lot, no it's different. You're not a regular you're not a regular regular artist right, no more. Right, right. So it's like all right, well if you want me. You can pay me. If not, there are thousands of artists. You can go. It doesn't. It's no skin off my back. Like I don't have no problem going around the corner and hustling in my paintings. You but worked to earn yeah. that spot to be it's able to, to not, yeah. react the way that you did, yeah. and to be able to use the power that you've earned yeah. to set things straight for yourself. You've earned that. Yeah. You've worked really hard. Thank you. You've that's that. you know, thank you. That's and that's what I feel. It's like if it was a couple of years early on and it happened, then okay, I still got to play by your rules. I don't have to no more. Like, Honest to God, you know yeah. what? About 20 minutes ago into the conversation, yeah. I had a thought in my head. And I was like, wow, Shock was all grown up. <laughs> I know, right? Like something has <laughs> changed in you in this last year. I mean, yeah. I, you were always impressive, yeah. but there is a level of confidence. The imagination or maturation or what Emancipation yeah, of or Shafla. Yeah, you, yeah, you, emanci- you, you, yeah, you really, yeah. something has changed and I think it's clicked in you. Yeah. I think you appreciate your own talent a lot more. Yeah, because I didn't, I honestly, as I didn't, I was never 100% confident in what I did. Mm-hmm. And I never was 100% confident in myself. And at some point, I just started really like, no, you are, you you are dope. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a reason that all these people believe in you. Yeah. You look at the stuff. Like, I sit there and I'll think to myself, 
there's been situations. I was homeless at one point. Yeah. Right. And that's when I started writing Teddy's story. I was yeah. homeless, and like you bounce back from all that through art. You know right. what I mean? Like you met these people. Cory Booker called you a, a treasure. You know what I mean? Off Jill art. Scott rubbed you. Jill Scott was your girlfriend <laughs> for twenty minutes. You know what I mean? I met Swiss Beats. Like me and Swiss Beats and Noriega and all of them at the podcast, and like it was just like Unreal. these people are people you're not supposed to know, and you did it off of art, right? Like. You but are they are that. regular people too. Yeah, so they've worked hard to and get themselves. And that's the amazing thing. Yeah. When meeting them, you realize they just like you. Yeah, like you're they're and even that with all their stature, they are so appreciated because just to be around you. Yeah, and you start realizing like, no, you're not. You know, this you were chosen. Yeah, you have, there's a saying. You know, we all hear the saying that you are called and someone chosen. And it's the realization when you have to go, no, nah, Negro, there's a reason why every time you look up and you <laughs> see a shooting star, right? You know? <laughs> like, I see shooting stars way too often, right? Do you really? <laughs> way too often. Wow. Just way too, it's like too many well, things happen. Well, you know happen. what? It's because yeah. you're always looking for the, at the sky. That's why. That's also true. Yeah. Bars. Yeah, come on. <laughs> like, you got to look forward, I right? Like <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of looking forward, yeah. what do you hope for this next year of life? Oh, man. Oh, well, I, I hope it, well, one of my dreams is, to like this whole the thing with the writing my own books and publishing mm-hmm. and getting that further. Because now you have two books, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah, <laughs> I actually have yeah, three. Yeah, you do. I have three. Yeah, I have three. Um, I need to catch up. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else have we been doing this whole yeah, time? <laughs> they're just sitting on the table, is all. Oh <laughs> my gosh, that's right, right next to me, Doug. <laughs> but like, you know, there's like the the two art books, the, and then the actual Teddy books. And I have stories and stuff written already for the characters and whatnot. And so we have multiple books ready to run with those. And that I want to eventually, the goal is to have other people write stories. Like, there's a character, um, that one right there, where there's a little girl, and she's got a cricket in her head. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was something, a concept that me and Jessica came up with, Empress, uh, years ago, where it's actually her and her brother who had passed. She views him like now as, like, a cricket oh, that she sees. Yeah. So it's like, all right, here's your character. You write the story, and I'll mm-hmm. illustrate it, and then we'll push it through to the trail. And like my dream is to, I don't even have it on my vision board. I want to be the trail version of um, Walt Disney, of Dr. Seuss, and yeah. all of them. Just create my like life, like my stories. I've always, everyone's always told me, "You tell our stories, please tell our stories." Mm. And I didn't realize the universe was telling me, "No, tell our stories." Yeah. Like, so I'm just finding ways to tell our stories, and yeah, and yeah. You know, well, you're brilliant at it. Uh, thank you. And I can't wait to see what what you do this next year. Yeah. I mean, it's just things are just going to get bigger and bigger. And bigger, and I'm so proud of you. Oh, so I'm proud I, of you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so, once again, happy birthday. Ah, happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> Virgos. Yeah, yeah, Virgos. And um, I'm so excited, and I, I'm just happy that you were on. You're my three P. So, three, thank hey, you so you much. Know, I'm, I'm honored to be the three P. And, like, it's, I look forward to going back and listening and see where we are from then to now, because we both gone so far. Yeah, uh, especially because the audio was really bad back uh, then. Okay. Was, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is, has room to improve. <laughs> so that's another lesson, guys. You can always always be improving. You always can be improving. <laughs> it's, uh, hey, it's, it's not about how far you, like, it's not far, how far you have to go, but how far you come. Yes. And sometimes you have to look back and go like, ah, well, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's the stuff that you learn. It's like, for instance, I like sometimes when I don't have any money, I have to get to the library. I use the library as an office a lot of times, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it's cool is because, like, they've developed a relationship with me to the extent that they, they in the house. They're, like, they literally, there's a spot. They don't let no one sit on the third floor. It's like, oh, that's, that's, that's If I'm not there, they still go, like, you know, I have my own little security with that. <laughs> but <laughs> it feels like a real corner office thing. But, like, a lot of t- sometimes I walk down there yeah. from here. Yeah. And it's like, I don't ever look back to see because I was, like, thinking, oh, my God, I got to go so far until I get to a certain point. And I look back and I'm like, yo, when I'm tired, I go, look how far you got. Though. Yeah. Keep going a little further. Absolutely. And that's what life is. It's like, don't look at the how much further you have to go. Think about how far you've come. And then just take that next and step. Just take that next step. On that note, <laughs> thank you so much, Shabla. No, thank you. You're awesome. I really You're appreciate awesome. it. <laughs> Everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I never got to give you a final update on my time at HRN HQ before having to leave yesterday, so here goes. Alright, so I woke up early, around 4am, to 
Glenn's Fred Flintstone typing in the next room as he was doing show prep for course in the morning. So I joined him in there and got some work done for the fine folks at Juicy Results. And then I snuck out in the morning to give Scooter more kisses, which he sweetfully, sweetfully, I don't know if that's a word, but he sweetfully obliged. I could seriously, I could nuzzle that guy all day long. He's just the cutest thing ever. And then I went and I produced my first live show ever. Guys, it was such a moment. It felt really cool, really good. I learned a lot about draft horses. I want a Shriner, so that's my wish list. Everybody, go look them up. You'll see how beautiful they are and why. I want one so bad. Um, but it went well. I didn't screw it up. So big yay for that. <laughs> and then after the show, Glenn announced that it was horse time, which meant it was time to ride, and I was instantly giddy. I went out. I helped brush the horses, which Nigel apparently really enjoys. <laughs> Oh my god okay so that saying about being hung like a horse it was created for a reason okay holy smokes so then i got to clean hooves and horseshoes for the first time two observations number one horse legs are very heavy and you have to get pretty close to their wangs i mean the sheaths to get the job done number two whatever is all clumped clumped up in those things like really stinks it's a mixture of dirt and old poop and god knows what else and it hits you after about five seconds all of a sudden like a ton of bricks so thank god that glenn and jen warned me or it may have fallen over on the spot wow all right then we hitched scooter up to the carriage and jen saddled up on nigel and we went off for a ride around the block i got a lot of great video that i hope to put up soon but it doesn't do it justice the ride was simply beautiful and glenn was even trusting enough to give me the reins at the end which i thought was really nice then uh we went to their field and jen got me up on her horse nigel now i'm serious it wasn't graceful by any stretch of the imagination but i got up on the first try and that's what matters people okay so i rode on him around the field a couple of times even walking him over a pole it, it felt so good up there and i totally get why people love it it was simply awesome there just aren't really any words and then we went back inside checked the, the storm track and just you know made the decision it was time for me to head home honestly more mostly because i so i didn't miss the quickly closing window to head back south which i was worried about you know in case they reversed the southbound lanes on the turnpike and made them all northbound lanes i didn't want to get stuck up, up in ocala away from my baby so i'm glad i was able to get up there for my training and then get back home to my jordan before Ir irma hit by the way she is scheduled to hit us on sunday which is my birthday <laughs> So I wrote the following. <laughs> happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Make a hard right turn, Irma, and head back to sea. But in all seriousness, if you're in Florida, guys, Irma is using us as a runway. So please pay attention to your local authorities. Take her seriously and either get down or hunker down safely if possible. I mean, get out or hunker down safely if, if possible. And if you're driving, please, please, please drive safely. I had a pickup truck lose control and flip over into the woods right in front of me. I pulled over, called 911, and ran to assess and assist. And thank God there were no children involved and all four men were alert and able to walk out on their own. But it was terrifying. And two of them... They had head injuries, one also with like a five inch laceration on his head and bleeding from his ear. It was awful. So, you know, all we could do while we waited for the ambulance was to just gather under my umbrella and pray. So please be careful, people. There's a picture of the truck flipped over on my social media for anybody who wants to go see it. But endless thanks to Glenn and Jen for inviting me into the HRN family with this opportunity and to the HRN auditors for welcoming me welcome me into the tribe with offers of rides and sheath cleaning oh my gosh it's going to be a wild adventure so i am saddled up and ready to go and as far as me and mine we have the shutters up and are hunkering down so thank you to everyone who's reached out with love and concern i will be in touch as quickly as possible on the other side prayers to all you have successfully curved the cube